Hey everyone, it is me, E, and welcome back to my channel. I'll be honest, today's video, I've been kind of distracted lately, so it was hard for me to get the motivation to make this. As you know, as I mentioned in a previous video, Shiny, which is my favorite Korean boy band, they're having a comeback later this month in February, and that's basically all I've been thinking about recently. But I managed to get myself together to make this video and I actually really like the art for this video. It's very simple and I think it's the kind of thing that anybody could make. So if you're not an artist but you like Disney stuff, I think that this is a painting that you could try out for yourself and do your own silhouette of whatever you want it to be. It's not absolutely perfect, but like I said, I had a lot of fun with it and I think it's really pretty in the end. So without further ado, let's get into the actual topic of discussion for this video, which is recent Disney parks news. So there's been a lot of changes and updates lately in light of the past year that the Walt Disney Company has had. So with COVID-19, obviously this was a tough year for the Disney Company and Parks in particular. I think this is the first year that they've reported a loss in a long time. This might be the first year that they've ever reported a loss. And so as a result of that, they're cutting back on certain things and changing up certain things. And this is basically me talking through my reaction to this information. So first of all, Disneyland announced that they were going to discontinue their current annual pass program. And to me, this just makes sense with the parks remaining closed with no reopening date scheduled. It's considerate to their pass holders to discontinue it and refund the remainder of their pass duration, basically. And I know that eventually they're going to bring back annual passes in some new form or fashion, the problem is that I'm sure when they do reinstitute annual passes, it will be majorly scaled back in terms of the benefits of getting one. They're probably going to be a lot more expensive too, because that's just the Disney way to cut back on benefits and raise prices. But as far as for the immediate future, it makes sense for them to make this move. The next thing is Walt Disney World's Magical Express is being discontinued in 2022, like in Jan on January 1st, basically. So for the rest of 2021, uh, folks who are staying on site on resort at Disney World will be able to use the Disney's Magical Express, but starting in January of 2022, that will no longer be an option. Disney's Magical Express was like a free shuttle service from MCO, the airport, to whatever Disney resort you're staying at. This is a, actually a, a huge loss in my opinion. Its elimination does remove a lot of the benefit for guests staying on site. I know for me personally, not having to rent a car or get rideshare services to navigate the Disney parks was a big benefit of staying on site. However, I think it makes a lot of sense for them to eliminate it. Um, Disney gave rideshare services as part of like the reasoning and rationale for the elimination of Disney's Magical Express, and I kind of agree. Uber and Lyft are fairly cost effective and convenient and they definitely get you to your resort faster because when you take Disney's Magical Express you have to potentially stop at several other resorts before you get to your resort and you have to wait to load up on the bus in the first place and if it's a particularly busy day you may have to wait on a second bus to show up to get going on your way to the resort. So it can take you maybe up to three hours from the time that you land to get to your resort. Whereas I believe with Uber or Lyft, it would probably be an hour at the most. Mirrors, which is the company that Disney used to do Disney's Magical Express, will continue busing people to the resorts in 2022. But of course, at that point, it's just going to be at a cost. You'll have to pay for that instead of it being included in your resort package. Disney is also um, going to be partnering up with a company to do a high-speed train basically from the airport to Disney Springs. Uh, I think you'll probably also have to pay for this service, but I mean that's another option for an easy way to get from the airport to the Disney Resort. Uh, but the thing is that this train will probably not be finished before Disney's Magical Express is eliminated in 2022. So the next thing, it was kind of announced at the same time as Disney's Magical Express ending, and that's the extra magic hours. Uh, they're being eliminated at Walt Disney World. So basically extra magic hours was an extra hour either before the park opened or after the park closed that resort guests would get to stay in the park and ride rides or do whatever. And I'm actually happy about this being eliminated. The reason being extra magic hours tended to just make parks more crowded. So let's say 
Magic Kingdom had extra magic hours, well, all of the resort guests staying on site at Disney World would tend to flock to the Magic Kingdom. And if they did not get a park hopper pass, if they didn't choose the upcharge ticket, then what would happen is they would just stay in that park all day long, which would make the crowds in that park heavier. Whereas what they're going to do in the future, instead of having all of the resort guests basically concentrated in one park to get one extra hour of benefit, they're going to let resort guests enter any park of their choosing on any day an extra 30 minutes earlier. To me, this is a better benefit because on an extra magic hours day, if you're in that park, the extra stuff that you get to do during that one hour of the park being open to you is kind of like the benefits of that are outweighed by the crowds that you experience in the rest of the day. So you're gonna be able to get a lot less done throughout the rest of the day if you take advantage of that hour in the morning. Whereas with the resort guests being spread out across all of the parks for that extra 30 minutes, they won't all be concentrated in the same space. Also, the thing is with that, to me this is huge because that means that if you're not staying on site and you don't get the benefit of the extra 30 minutes, you will never be the first person in line for something, ever. You will basically never have that rope drop experience again. To me, like I said, that's huge. To me, that would be like, I could never not stay on site going forward because I would be afraid that I would never be able to get onto big ticket, e-ticket attractions without a fast pass. Because basically what you do now is if you can't get a fast pass for something, you make sure you rope drop that attraction, meaning you're one of the first people in line for it. If the park's already open 30 minutes to resort guests, popular attractions like Flight of Passage and, um, well, Rise of the Resistance has like boarding passes or whatever, but popular attractions like that, Slinky Dog Dash, if you don't get the fast pass for it, you're basically out of luck and you're just gonna have to wait in line a long time. Because in that 30 minutes that park is open, I get, I, I'm betting that that line's gonna pile up pretty quick. I think that that 30 minutes can still be really productive as well, depending on what attractions you choose, because some people are like, oh, it's only an extra 30 minutes, they're letting you into the park, and by the time you walk back to the attraction, you're only gonna have an extra like 15 minutes or whatever. But the way that rope drop really works at Disney parks is it's not that you are let into the park 30 minutes early, you're let back onto attractions 30 minutes early. So if you wanna go ride Space Mountain uh, first thing in the morning at rope drop, you are able to walk right up to the edge of Tomorrowland and then when they drop the rope, you don't have to walk all the way from the front gate to Space Mountain. You only have to walk from the edge of Tomorrowland to Space Mountain. And that's how rope drop works at every single one of those Disney parks. You get right up to the edge of the land that you want to enter into. So let's say you want to ride Splash Mountain or Big Thunder Mountain. You could get on Big Thunder Mountain and get right off of it and get on to Splash Mountain, get off of that and maybe even hoof it over to Haunted Mansion before the park opens. Because you're gonna be able to basically get on all of those rides with no wait. Then once the park opens, things will start to pick up a little bit and you'll have to start waiting for stuff. But that extra 30 minutes, I think could get you up to three attractions in that short period of time. If you are willing to walk quickly or you're going to do attractions that are relatively close to each other. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is the storyline of Jungle Cruise. They are allegedly going to change the storyline of Jungle Cruise to remove negative depictions of natives. My first reaction was a bit of irritation because Trader Sam, which is probably the most famous quote unquote native character in the Jungle Cruise, he doesn't really represent any specific tribe or people. So I don't know exactly what group of people would be offended by his depiction. And also I thought, well, cannibals exist in the real world, don't they? And so I was thinking, it seems like they're just trying to pointlessly sanitize the ride and make it more like kid friendly and remove any kind of darker themes. However, since that initial reaction of mine, I have learned that there is kind of debate over the existence of actual cannibalist tribes, like whether or not they even exist. And Western narratives about cannibal tribes were used as kind of a mean of asserting white superiority over native people groups. So considering the fact that cannibalism might not even exist in those native cultures and may just be kind of a sensationalized story used to drum up fear of non-white people, yeah, I can see why Disney may want to remove the 
narrative of there being a cannibalist tribe from their Jungle Cruise attraction. I think that it was kind of funny or whatever, but um, if it hurts people's feelings or is basically just a perpetuation of a, a made up stereotype, then yeah, it's probably good to get rid of it. It kind of reminds me of when Pirates of the Caribbean eliminated the wife auction scene. The thing is that that was a problem of Disney's own creation. Basically because they were incorporating the movie franchise, the Pirates of the Caribbean movie franchise into the ride. Now, you know, pirates were characters that we were supposed to root for because we root for Jack Sparrow and we root for all these pirates and we're supposed to th see them as kind of heroic, be you know, characters. But we can't really root for people who are selling women. So they had to change that scene. The original Pirates of the Caribbean ride was more or less depicting pirates as enemies or villains. Like these are people you don't want to be like. And so the woman selling scene makes sense. Like this is a deplorable thing to do, but the shifting of the ride to focus on Jack Sparrow and like, you know, pirates are so fun and being a pirate is so fun. It makes that scene make no sense. And so like, you know, showing offensive stuff, as long as it's made known that it's wrong, isn't always a bad thing. But the problem is if you're showing offensive material without the accompanying understanding that this is wrong, then it becomes a problem. Another ride that they're allegedly going to change soon is Splash Mountain. They announced this a while ago, but they didn't really give a timeline as to when we would expect that change to occur. And basically, the reason is that Splash Mountain was based off of Song of the South, which is a very racist movie that Disney made. And, you know, this one does hurt me a little bit because to me, I've never seen Song of the South, but to me, I associate the song Zippity Doodah with Disney World. That's a very strong association. It's a song that makes me happy and think of, you know, times in the parks. Um, and of course, if they're transitioning Splash Mountain to be Princess and the Frog themed, which is the plan, they're probably going to be eliminating Zippity Doodah from the song. So that is a little bit sad to me. Uh, like I said, most people probably have no idea what Song of the South is, and they don't know that the characters in Splash Mountain are from that movie. It honestly makes me wonder why Disney did that in the first place. Like, why would they? It was built in the 90s. Like, they already knew the movie was offensive in the 90s, so I don't know why they were trying to make an attraction based around it. Uh, but like, as I said, I understand that the Song of the South is really quite bad with racist depictions of black people. And so I totally understand why it would bother people that Disney has built this attraction and has found a way to profit off of that horrible property, that horrible movie. So like, I totally understand and agree with the decision to retheme it and remove characters from Song of the South. Because as I said, it's not really right that Disney would make any profit off of that movie that they made. It's stupid that they ever even tried to. But uh, to be honest, I really don't know if I think that Princess and the Frog is the best fit for that. And I almost wish that they just didn't incorporate any movie intellectual property into the ride because to me, Disney parks and Disney movies have some overlap, but it shouldn't be like totally overlapped. And I wish that maybe they would come up with some original characters or original ideas to put in that ride to replace the characters from Song of the South so that it could still be a unique parks experience instead of another playthrough of Princess and the Frog. The other thing is that, I, like I said, I just don't know if it really fits it that well because that part of the park, Frontierland, is more like Western wilderness-y kind of themed like country, like Tennessee, maybe even like out West some. And Princess and the Frog is very much New Orleans, which is a totally different vibe. Like, I guess there's like swamp area in New Orleans that could maybe fit that theme, but um, there are no mountains there. Is, isn't, isn't that true? Isn't New Orleans kind of in a valley? Um, anyway, I just, I don't know if I see that 100%, but I guess it would be, it's, it's a good thing that they're eliminating imagery and characters from Song of the South. But anyway, that's basically 
my recap of recent Disney news. Let me know what you think about these stories. Do you agree with me? Particularly, I wanna hear what you have to say about extra magic hours, because I know that one's controversial. But that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed the art this week as much as I did and have a great one. Bye.